protein, that wonderful macronutrient that all the gym goers love to talk about and shake up in their fancy pants protein bottles. And most of the time, we tend to talk about how we are not getting enough protein in our diets and try to figure out ways to get enough grams per day. But what about eating too much of it? Can we actually eat too much protein to where it could cause us to gain fat? Because we can definitely eat too many carbohydrates that can result in increased fat. So does this also apply to protein? Well, today we're gonna answer these questions by talking about what we exactly need the protein for. And spoiler alert, we need it for more than just our skeletal muscles. We'll also touch on how much you really need and what really happens when you eat too much of it. It's definitely gonna be a fun one. So let's jump into this anatomical and physiological awesomeness. So before we get into if excess protein can increase body fat, let's do a quick macronutrient comparison. The three macronutrients are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Now, often you hear a lot of people saying, carbs will make you fat. And I always find that statement a little bit ironic because what about the fat that you just ate? Fat that you eat that isn't immediately utilized for energy purposes will get stored as fat. It requires no major conversions. So you can obviously gain weight by eating excess fat. Carbohydrates, on the other hand, will not get stored as fat until after a few important processes occur. All ingested carbohydrates that get absorbed will circulate in the body as glucose. Even fructose that you ingest will get converted to glucose by the liver prior to the liver releasing it into the bloodstream. Some of that glucose will be utilized to meet immediate energy needs and to maintain sufficient blood glucose levels. But any extra glucose beyond that will be utilized to fill up your glycogen stores, glycogen being the storage form of glucose. And your main storehouses of glycogen are your liver, and skeletal muscles. The liver can store about 100 to 120 grams of glycogen, and the skeletal muscles can store about 4 to 500 grams of glycogen, with those that exercise consistently being on the higher end of those numbers, because increased glycogen storage capacity is one of the many beneficial adaptations of exercise. And I actually do want to clarify, that's 4 to 500 grams throughout all of the muscles, not 4 to 500 grams per muscle. If that were the case, that would be just glorious because we could eat so many carbohydrates prior to them being converted to and stored as fat, which is the next important point. Your body will only convert carbohydrates into fat once you have fully filled up your glycogen stores in your liver and skeletal muscles. And if you consistently exercise, you are frequently draining your glycogen stores and therefore would have the ability to eat more carbohydrates prior to them being converted to fat. But admittedly, with all the sugar added to many of the foods that we consume, it's pretty easy to eat excess carbs beyond your glycogen storage capacity. But the point is, fat is fat, requires no major conversion, but carbs do not become fat until eaten beyond your glycogen storage capacity. So can we apply some of these same principles that we learned about carbs to proteins? Like, can we first store excess protein in the liver or in the skeletal muscle? And if we go beyond that, then will the protein get converted to fat? Well, kind of. And with all this talk about whether or not excess protein can increase one's body fat, let's talk about an awesome tool that can give you insights on your muscle mass, adipose tissue, and other health insights. And that is the Hume Health Body Pod. This is not just some bathroom scale. It's a clinical grade body analyzer that gives you much more information than just your weight. The Body Pod uses bioelectrical impedance analysis to scan and deliver over 45 metrics. Things like skeletal muscle mass, body fat percentage, hydration levels, and metabolic age, to name a few. It even breaks that data down into regions, which helped me to realize that I may have some mild imbalances in my muscle mass between my left and right side. So you can definitely use this to address these muscular imbalances. Now, admittedly, I've always been a bit skeptical about at-home devices like this in the past that claim they are 98% accurate like the body pod does but I had body composition tests done at a lab around the same time I started using the body pod and the results were nearly the same. So I've been using it for weeks now and I've been logging consistent weigh-ins, syncing my sleep and workouts, and even setting milestone goals that I can track in the app. And as a bonus, the body pod is HSA and FSA eligible. So if you wanna know a little bit more about your own anatomy, click the link in the description to check out the body pod and use our coupon code, the anatomy lab to start optimizing your health routine today. And now, let's get back to protein. When you ingest protein, the protein will start to get broken down into the building blocks of protein 
called amino acids. And then those amino acids will get absorbed through the intestinal wall and then into the blood. But the first stop for the blood that is coming from the intestine is the liver. And the liver decides the fate of these amino acids. But something that is important for us to realize here is that sometimes we kind of just simplify why we need to eat protein. Like if we ask someone, why do you need to eat protein? One of the answers you are going to hear quite often is that we need the protein or the amino acids that make up that protein to build muscle. And that is true. But the amino acids we ingest are used for so much more. Like the liver actually uses about 20% of the amino acids we ingest as energy and to make new proteins such as liver enzymes and plasma proteins, which plasma proteins are proteins that can transport substances throughout the blood. And some plasma proteins even provide immune functions. Then we have all the other cells and tissues throughout the body that need those amino acids to make enzymes of their own, as well as cellular proteins that provide structure and support for the cell. Some hormones are built from amino acids, and even the antibodies produced by your white blood cells are proteins, and so therefore they need amino acids. Then we've got our skeletal muscles, and if we have enough amino acids left over, we can use those to build up our muscle tissue. And the amount of protein we need to eat in order to have enough amino acids for all the various cells and tissues that we just talked about, plus have enough to build muscle tissue, varies based upon the physical activity and goals of the person. And this can range from about one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight, all the way up to two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Some will even go as high as 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. But the upper end of those protein intake numbers are going to be for people that are really wanting to build muscle tissue, like bodybuilders and certain athletes where a high amount of muscle tissue is important. But even ultra endurance athletes need to be on the upper end because they burn so many calories that they often end up using more of their protein for energy rather than building tissues. Now, if you've ever tried to eat two or even 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, that can take some work especially if you tried to do that just with food and not with the help of a protein supplement or protein powder. So you may be starting to see that based on everything we've just learned, that it's harder to eat protein in excess compared to say something like eating carbohydrates in excess. And I'll get into the details a little bit more of why that is in just a second. But let's pretend that you did eat excess protein beyond your needs. Let's say based upon your needs and goals, you needed to eat 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, but you consistently ate two or 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. What happens to all of those excess amino acids? Well, your body doesn't store excess amino acids like it stores carbs as glycogen or fats as, well, fat. There's no amino acid reserve tank that is the equivalent to your glycogen or fat reserve tanks. You don't just have amino acids hanging out in excess, waiting for your next workout so that they can hurry into your muscles and build them up. Your amino acid pool within your bloodstream is constantly in flux. So if you did have excess amino acids circulating throughout your body, your liver will remove the amino group from those amino acids, and then you're left with a carbon skeleton. And if you haven't heard of a carbon skeleton before, it's pretty much the backbone or fundamental structure of an organic molecule. And our bodies can do a lot with a carbon skeleton. And in this case, it will do one of two things. This carbon skeleton from the amino acid can be utilized to produce energy, which is ATP, the energy currency of our cells, or that carbon skeleton can get converted to a fatty acid and eventually stored as fat. But what dictates whether those excess amino acids will get utilized to produce ATP or get converted to fat? Well, the answer is it depends how much of the other macronutrients you are eating. Let me give you two different scenarios. Let's say in the first scenario, you only need 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, but you're consistently eating two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. However, let's say you're not eating enough carbohydrates and fats to meet your energy needs. In this case, those excess amino acids will be utilized to make up for the lack of energy that you're not getting from the carbohydrates and fats. And therefore, you would not gain any fat from the excess protein intake. But let's give you the other scenario. Let's say you still only need 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, but you're still eating those two grams. But now you're also eating enough or even more carbohydrates and fats than you need. In that case, yes, 
the excess amino acids could get converted to and stored as fat. So as you can see, we need to establish a balance between the macronutrients. And in reality, excess protein is rarely the main problem when it comes to gaining fat. It's third in line behind carbohydrates and fats when it comes to your body's preferred energy source. And what I alluded to earlier, it's a lot easier to eat carbohydrates in excess than it is to eat proteins in excess. And one of the main reasons for this is that protein rich food tends to be more satiating, or in other words, proteins typically make you feel fuller than carbohydrates do, especially if we are talking about carbohydrates in the form of sugar. So many of our foods and even beverages have added sugar to them. And most of the time, this added sugar does not make you feel any more full, but still gives you additional calories. Like think of this scenario. Let's say you had two bowls of the exact same amount of fruit, but one of those bowls you dump in a couple of spoonfuls of sugar. Yes, it is likely going to be sweeter and tastier, but you are not really going to feel much fuller than if you'd just eaten the bowl without the added sugar. But you definitely added more calories, which gets you closer to getting to that point where you've totally filled up your glycogen stores and all those excess carbs will then get stored as fat. Plus, if we start including sugary drinks, then it becomes even easier for us to get more calories in the form of sugar. And again, it's not going to make you feel much fuller than if you just had a glass of water instead. Now, I do want to say that if you've watched some of our previous videos on sugar and carbohydrates, you'll know that I'm definitely not anti-carb or anti-sugar. There are nuances to this. For example, there are certain situations where simple sugars could be beneficial. Like I'm stupidly running a marathon in a week and the energy gels I'm taking with me, I definitely want those to be simple sugars because I want them in my bloodstream as quickly as possible to be utilized as energy for my working muscles because over 26.2 miles, you can definitely deplete your glycogen stores. And there are some additional nuances on how your body prioritizes the use of amino acids. Like skeletal muscle protein synthesis isn't necessarily the last priority after all the other body proteins are synthesized, especially if you are stimulating the skeletal muscles with exercise. But those nuances we'll touch on in another video. And we've actually touched on some of them already in our other two protein videos, one that goes into how we absorb proteins and another with more details on how much protein you need based on your activity. So I'll link those both below in the description, but I hope you learned some useful information with today's video. Thank you for watching and supporting our channel, everyone. It definitely means a lot to us and we'll see you in the next one.